Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Flash Season 8 Review Series and today I am going to be talking about Episode 14, Funeral for a Friend, which I have just finished watching and this episode, in my honest opinion, was pretty much a hit and miss. There wasn't really anything going on in this episode that I could really get my teeth into, nor was there any moments that stood out to me. But at the same time, I wouldn't really put this episode down as one of the worst, but I wouldn't put it down as one of the greatest either. It was mostly below average. And when you have an episode that's called Funeral for a Friend, I fully expected to see a lot more. I had very high expectations for this episode in terms of what I wanted to see, but unfortunately, we didn't really get that in this episode and once again the lack of Barry Allen you know for some reason continues to be a ongoing trend for this show I fully expected to see Barry Allen showcased to the fullest in the lead especially as I mentioned when you have a title like Funeral for a Friend you know I really expected to see a lot of Barry Allen in this episode I didn't really expect to see him in the Flash costume you know I wasn't really looking for that. I was just looking more to see Barry Allen, but we did get to see him, but once again, just not as much as we would like. And also another thing which I will talk about in this episode, there are a couple of things that I had an issue with in regards to what I wanted to see in this episode. And, you know... There just wasn't really anything, I wouldn't say I disliked, but it wasn't really anything that I liked either. It was just nothing really. And certain parts of this episode felt really forced and there just wasn't really anything for me to invest into, which is a shame really because, you know, I've said before that I'm a huge fan of The Flash. I've been watching every single episode since the day it came out in 2014. But I feel like there just seems to be something missing in season eight. I mean, we got off to an amazing start with the five part Armageddon special. But then after that, we've just kind of been on like cruising along. You know, there's been a few moments where there's been some decent episodes, but for the most part, there just hasn't really been anything going on here. The most that we've had is. Iris' time sickness, which I'll talk about in a moment, and of course the Deathstorm story arc, which I mentioned in the last review that I felt it ended far too soon. I think there was still a lot of mileage in that story arc, and maybe that's something that could have been paid off in a big way. Maybe the second to last episode of season eight, or maybe even the season eight finale, but it is what it is. So I'm going to give a quick recap of what's happened so far and then we're going to get straight into talking about episode 14. So we saw in episode 13, Killer Frost decided to make herself kind of like a frost storm or like an anti-storm to counter Death Storm. And she took on Death Storm and save Caitlyn, stopping Deathstorm from making Caitlyn into his bride and she absorbed all of his powers into her own body and thus defeating the demon himself but at a heavy price. We see she was unable to handle Deathstorm's powers and as a result of that she ended up dying at the end of episode 13 and I kind of felt that it was an emotional moment, but at the same time, I don't know really, it just felt like it could have been bigger. I just felt like it could have been more grand. You know, it just didn't really do a lot for me. You know, Frost's death, as I said in the last review, although a very shocking moment, some of it just kind of felt forced to me. It's just my opinion really, but at the same time, I understand and respect what they were trying to do, but it just didn't really do a lot for me, if I'm honest. Just didn't really um, 
get me to care enough. I mean, yeah, obviously I wasn't happy about the fact that they killed off Killer Frost, but it was just kind of too obvious, you know. I saw it coming a mile off that, oh, Killer Frost is going to die. You know, it was just too obvious. And, you know, that's pretty much how we ended episode 13, you know, Killer Frost dying. And we now see this just pretty much continues on into episode 14. And as I said, this episode, I had some high expectations, but nothing great. You know, there was nothing really there that got my teeth into. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode 14, Funeral for a Friend. So this episode picks up where we left off at the end of episode 13, where we see a montage of Team Flash mourning as they are trying to get back to their everyday lives. And we see Chester is at Jitters, Allegra at work, Iris walking on the street, and Barry in the medical lab at Star Labs, reliving Frost's death. And we hear the alarm goes off for a bank robbery, and we see someone in a suit is overpowering the police and we see the flash arrive at the scene just in the nick of time with allegra and cecile we see the guys wearing a stolen exosuit from ivro labs and he is calling himself the blockbuster now for those of you who read the comic books and who are familiar with that name blockbuster was kind of like the incredible hulk you know he was a big guy who in his childhood days Bruce Wayne saved him from drowning and he never forgot who he was so when I heard the name blockbuster yeah I felt it was a bit insulting because this blockbuster wasn't a big guy it was just a guy in a suit so yeah I was a little bit disappointed with that so we see things get bad really fast especially when Chester mistakenly calls Frost to destabilize the bad guy and we see that the team is left to their own devices as Flash tends to a building that's uh, full of people thanks to Blockbuster's powers and it's up to Cecile to stop the criminal but she can't do it and the villain gets away. We learn that the criminal is called Blockbuster and there are no tips or leads as to his next whereabouts and we see the team is struggling so Barry decides to give everybody a pep talk and Caitlin isn't there just as she's preparing for the funeral. Joe suggests that the team does the same and they decide to take a boat break but Barry disagrees and Caitlin shows up. She says her mum is handling the funeral and it's clear Caitlin's not handling the grief very well and she says she's not going to Frost's funeral. She leaves and Joe says the team needs to do something to honour Frost in her memory. We see Iris has lunch with Cecile and they talk about honouring Frost. Cecile says she says she is going to take up pro bono work for a cause Frost was very passionate about. Iris says she is writing a special obituary for her, but she can't bring herself to write it without exposing herself as a member of Team Flash. And she ends up passing the task to a member of staff with experience writing obituaries. Later at Jitters, we see um, Frost's mum Carla read the draft, but she says it feels cold and impersonal, almost like someone doesn't really know who Frost was. She also wants to check on Iris. Iris confides that she doesn't know what to say because she never really got to know Frost that well. Carla tells Iris that all Frost cared about was protecting people. Iris ends up recording a podcast about Frost and has people on the show as guests who explain their experiences and their moments with Frost and the people who saved their lives thanks to Frost. At Jitters, the name of the drink Killer Frost is changed to just Frost. And then we cut to Allegra and Chester's turn as we go through this episode, as we see all members of Team Flash dealing with Frost grief in their own way. And we see in Chester's lab that they're trying to figure out how to honor Frost and Chester has an idea to come up with an eternal flame, similar to what all of the heroes did for Oliver Queen back in the crisis event. But Allegra shoots it down and they bicker about a sandwich and Barry pops in looking for a park before Allegra gets a notification that something is happening at the bar. It turns out that Chilbane, aka Mark, is drunk and a little out of control. Allegra and Chester intervene but they continue bickering instead. He passes out and they bring him back to Star Labs. 
They stop bickering after hearing Mark talk about Frost before he passes out, and they decide that they will hang Frost's jacket, not just her costume, in their Hall of Heroes to honour her. We then see how Barry is dealing with his grief, and we see him standing on top of a mountain, building a snowman as he works his way down Frost's bucket list for living a fulfilled life. The list includes ice sculptures, hanging one of her artworks in an art gallery, and a hot dog eating contest. Back at Star Labs, Mark wakes up and startles Barry. Mark finds the list and the two of them talk about Frost, and it turns out that finishing the list didn't feel complete for Barry. Mark tells Barry all Frost really wanted was to take care of the people she loved. And then we cut to seeing how Caitlin deals with her grief, and after leaving Star Labs, she goes home and takes Frost's art off the wall and starts packing up everything related to her sister and then sits on the couch and seems to disassociate herself until Barry shows up before the funeral. She's not happy he's there. He tells her to ask herself, what would Frost want you to do? What would she want you to be like this? Caitlin says Frost would tell her to stop being an idiot and she opens up about Frost was always the voice in her head supporting her, but now she's gone and she doesn't feel whole. Barry tells Caitlin that Frost's voice is still inside her and Caitlin, with that in mind, she realises that she's never really gone. Caitlin goes to the funeral and delivers a eulogy and then promises Frost that she will keep her alive metaphorically. Now, this scene here was where I had an issue with. You know, anybody who's read Funeral for a Friend, Superman, all of the DC Universe came out to honour the Man of Steel. Batman was there, Green Lantern was there, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Hawkman, everybody was there. For a moment like this, which they're trying to push as this was the big moment, we lost the big hero, where was Cisco? I really wanted Cisco there. He should have been there, you know. He was a big part of that story arc with Caitlin and Killer Frost. He should have been there. And Elongated Man, aka Ralph Dibney, he should have been there. Now, obviously, we know. The real reason why, because of stuff that went on behind the scenes. But, you know, we should have had some mention that, oh, Ralph couldn't make it, but he sends his condolences, you know, just something like that. You know, this just felt very, very empty. I just felt that we should have had more people at the funeral. We should have had um, Harrison Wells should have been at the funeral. You know, we should have had... You know, Kid Flash there. You know, there's so many people that should have been in such an important scene like this. And I just really felt that there was so much missing. Should have had Impulse and Nora there. We should have had lots of people for this scene, but unfortunately we didn't. After the funeral, we see all of Team Flash talking about Frost at the West House. And they get an alert about Blockbuster. And the team suits up while Caitlin stays and chats with Joe, but not before making a call. We see Caitlin meets Mark at her apartment and she has a gene sequencer. Turns out Caitlin wasn't talking metaphorically. She's turned her whole apartment into a lab and she vows to Mark that she's going to bring Frostbreak and he's going to help her. Hmm. At CC Media, Taylor turns in a good article that Iris says will go on the front page. She also tries to claim Allegra did a bad job in her absence, and now Taylor also wants to figure out who else works with the Flash. After Taylor leaves, she goes back to Iris's office to pick up her phone and sees that Iris has completely disappeared, not realising that due to Iris's time sickness. And that's how we end episode 14. Overall, as I said at the beginning, this episode wasn't great but it wasn't bad either it was just below average and it was kind of a hit and miss for me there wasn't really much going for this episode and as i mentioned earlier in the funeral we should have had cisco there we should have had a little mention about ralph you know we should have had a lot more people paying their respects to killer frost but unfortunately we didn't get that so this episode won't go down as one of the show's best but it won't go down as one of the worst. I'll just say it was below average. But um, other than that, I don't really have much else to say about this episode. You know, as I said, this wasn't really an enjoyable one for me. 
but I'm hoping that the next episode will be a lot better, but we'll see really. So that's going to be it for me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of this episode? Did you enjoy it? What was your thoughts on Caitlin wanting to bring Frost back? How do you think she's going to pull that off? And also, what about Iris's time sickness? Do you think Team Flash will be able to get her back? And also, Killer Frost's funeral. Do you think there should have been more past characters make a cameo, like Cisco, Harrison Wells, maybe Kid Flash, maybe Impulse or Nora? Do you think they should have been at the funeral? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below, and I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Flash Season 8 review series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 15, which I'm really hoping is going to be a lot better than this one, but we'll just have to wait and see, really, but I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully it will deliver. Especially as I've been hearing rumours that the Reverse Flash is set to return and he's going to be debuting a brand new costume. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that's going to unfold. So until next time, take care everybody and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.